Hey, good morning, folks. Welcome to La La Farm. We are gonna. We've had lots of requests through our YouTube channel as well as on our Facebook page um, at uh, La La Farm FL um, on Facebook to give a tour of the barn. A lot of the videos that we've done up to this point have highlighted the chickens, some have highlighted the goats, um, but in the background of many of those videos people see kind of us walking around our barn. So uh, we've had lots of requests just to kind of talk about we want to see your barn set up. Um, so what I did is I did a lot of research prior to building this barn um, looking at the features that we wanted. What we wanted was an open, uh, we live in Florida, so we wanted an open barn. We didn't want, uh, we didn't want it closed in, so we got lots of air circulation because uh, it gets really hot, really humid in the middle of the summer. Um, so that's what we had. We basically started with a, with a pole barn. Uh, we had that built. Uh, from the pole barn, we then had a concrete floor put in. The footprint for the total barn is 48 by 48. Uh, the footprint for the concrete is 36 by 48, so 36 foot wide by 48 inches deep. Um, and then we have um, goat facilities on both sides of the barn, and all of our pastures feed into the barn uh, through one common alley. Now, we don't have all the cross-fencing done for that yet, but eventually we will. So that's the purpose of today's video, is just kind of give you a, a, a tour of our barn setup. Um, hope this is helpful to folks, because I looked at dozens upon dozens of videos uh, in preparation for building our own barn, and uh, a lot, I saw a lot that I liked, but I saw a lot that I didn't like. I saw a lot that would work for us in Florida and I saw a lot that probably would not work for us in Florida uh, so this is kind of the unique style that that we have come up with so hope you enjoyed the the tour uh, if you enjoy the video make sure to subscribe to the channel uh, make sure to ring the bell uh, when you subscribe to get uh, notification of further content um, but here you go here's a here's a tour of the La La Farm barn all right sir you what you're looking at is uh, from the front left corner uh, of the barn so what you can see is uh, as I said the whole footprint is 48 by 48 um, we have a 12 foot uh, lean-to on either side uh, it's the exact same configuration so what we had installed was just the pole barn uh, with the support all the way to the left and then the middle support right in front of the camera everything else we built after the uh, barn was originally put up so in terms of uh, our barn configuration so when you first walk in uh, we've got a little bit of storage this is wood that we still haven't used yet um, we keep two different trailers in the barn the first trailer here is what we use for all of our uh, dry feed minerals um, so that we can try to keep that as dry as possible and then our hay is stored in the back we just don't have the tarp back up over it yet um, uh, but that's generally uh, generally tarped uh, so we keep the, the hay in the back of the barn uh, so we can stack it up uh, pretty high uh, but we generally don't go through that much hay uh, just during the winter uh, during the months when there's not going to be sufficient forage or not good quality forage. I mean, they're always going to have some degree of forage even during the, the dead of winter because of this Florida or that the pine needles or something else. But it's not good quality, um, uh, some, of the, some of the plants. Uh, so we do supplement with uh, hay uh, for all the goats and then uh, alfalfa uh, for the does during winter. So uh, this is just some of our uh, equipment that we've got, some storage uh, shelves in there is uh, some of the medications, supplies, first aid supplies, um, uh, various tools. But what you can see is what we've done is uh, from the original 6x6 six six supports that came into the barn, all of our, all of our cross pens that we've built are all with uh, six by sixes as well and then we've put the uh, header joists in and tied those together uh, inside of the individual coops um, so it's the same thing we're going to go in there in a second and kind of look through uh, those but you can see it's basically the setup is exactly the same on both sides it's the same uh, construction configuration everything we've tied together for hurricane 
purposes in Florida. Uh, the barn is, is uh, set up to 140 miles an hour. You know, this thing is really over-engineered in terms of everything is lag bolted together. Uh, so it doesn't move when even our biggest of, of uh, goats uh, decide that they want to hit on it. So continuing on to the back side of the barn, um, what we have behind the hay here is um, behind the barn is our chicken coop. So what you have here are roll away nesting boxes. Uh, this is where the eggs are retrieved. Um, over here we have our chicken feeders uh, and those both or all three of them go through the wall. Um, and then again on the outside is just various pens. So let's go into one of the pens. I'm going to start with the with the buck pen. So uh, we use the same gates. These are just standard uh, gates that we got from Tractor Supply. We didn't want our livestock guardian dogs uh, to come through the gate, so we did put some 4x4 uh, uh, goat fencing uh, in there, just attached it with cable ties. But this is the locking system, or the locking mechanism uh, gate latch that we use, and we really like this. Uh, it opens from both sides. So, um, either side it opens with uh, works really really well but the thing that I like most about it it is just self locks so it locks um, once we pull the gate closed automatically um, so this is our um, right now our current buck pen um, so we've got our two bucks uh, and two weathers uh, in here uh, we feed them uh, minimal supplementation about a half a pound a day uh, is what the bucks get and that's their feeders here. Right here we have a mineral feeder. This is one that Lala built uh, and has worked really, really great for our goats. Uh, keeps the minerals dry. It keeps them uh, out, of the, out of the Florida humidity. Um, right here we've got a Himalayan salt lick. Uh, that helps also with, uh, um, uh, with mineral supplementation. And it keeps them from, it keeps them frankly from, from even eating a lot of the of the straw that we do supplement them with from time to time. So one of the significant features of this particular pen is you'll notice that it's fenced. We've got uh, we've got goat panels going all the way around it. So this is essentially our catch pen for the bucks. So when we're trying to do weights on them, uh, trying to uh, do medical checks or anything, um, this is where we will catch them at, as we basically have another gate that we bring in uh, to close up this, and then we can squeeze them down into this alley uh, and catch them relatively easy. It's not, not difficult whatsoever. So we're not chasing them around acres upon acres of property. Um, so out here, uh, you can see we've got our, uh, both of our livestock guardian dogs are in here right now. That's Betsy walking down the fence line. And then Bruno, the white Akbosh, uh, kind of to the left of the film, of the camera. And then you'll see a black one kind of wandering around. That's our domestic dog, Boone. Uh, so he's, he's part of the herd, but he does stay inside. So here is our hay feeder for the bucks. This is something that um, we wanted something that was pretty rugged, uh, that uh, protected the hay from... Uh, from the Florida rain that protected the hay from moisture um, and really wasn't something that they could beat up. So this is just a lid, an access lid, where we access uh, the hay feeder from. Walking around to the other side. This is uh, the buck hay feeder. So they are able to kind of climb up on there and feed directly out of there. Uh, they use uh, this here, uh, this ledge, as uh, kind of get their front feet up on, but they're able to pull it out of there. And the hay stays uh, real, real dry. Um, all of our pens are configured with, automat with an automatic watering system. Um, this has worked uh, pretty well. Uh, we sanitize them on a weekly basis with... Uh, uh, with Clorox um, to uh, keep any algae or uh, algae from buildup, but it works just like uh, your toilet does. So it's got a float in there as they drink it, it activates uh, the float and keeps it at a, at a fixed level, whatever you want that level to be. So all of our pens are, 
are uh, equipped with the automatic waterers. So this here is the buck pen. So this is a smaller pen and they will be moving in the spring to a much larger pen um, that's right at about uh, two and a half to two and a half acres or so uh, that all of the bucks will be on uh, and then this will just become another one of the uh, feeding paddocks for the does. So this is a good example of ultimately what we will have is all of our pastures ultimately there will be 10 to 11 pass or, or uh, paddocks that will be uh, all connected to the barn. This one's direct connected. The other ones are going to be connected by a common alley uh, that's uh, gate controlled. Um, Bruno keeps jumping up into the into the viewfinder. So if you see a white dog come up from the bottom, that's Bruno the Yachtbosch. Um, so that's one of our weathers. That is a uh, Whiskey's Blue Yarl uh, from the Blue Sun line out there. The one standing up. Um, the one that's standing up right now, that's our other weather chewy, the one standing by the fence. Uh, that is um, Zeus's sting Einar, so he's out of the um, uh, Heslington sting line. So those are our two breeding bucks. Both of them are right at 11 months old um, and covered all of our does very quickly this year. Um, so that's the buck pen. So the other thing is all of our livestock guarding dogs, they use the same feeders as the bucks do. So that's the buck pen. So now budding up to the buck pen, we go into we go into the main doe pasture. Now how we how we kind of lock these, we don't use any fancy lock, we just use a a standard uh, eye bolt and then it slips down there where a lot normally would be and it keeps that from from locking so each night to keep these things from arbitrarily being pushed or pulled somehow we keep that little lock pin on there and we just have it connected to a chain so here we're going into our main doe pasture so we've got this little this little uh Basically, it's a dog kennel that we had. We take we took a section out of that, and this is where uh, our um, our senior livestock guardian dog sleeps at night. So she comes up here um, and sleeps on this side of the pasture. Uh, she prefers this because this is what we kept her in when we first got her as a as a young pup, and it's just something that she just uh, feels comfortable in. So we keep that uh, padded up for her. But this is the. This is one side of our of our um, doe main doe pasture. Here's a view from the outside of the barn. So what we're looking at now is is the left sided lean to. So we can come around here. So we've got on the back uh, we of the main of the main barn we have a chicken coop. Um, that chicken coop uh, will ultimately have. Uh, about 130 birds in it. Uh, right now we're at about 90. Uh, we're trying to get the other adult birds uh, migrated up here. Um, but attached on both ends of that is uh, additional essentially 12 by 12 or 12 by 15 loafing shed uh, right here. And that's just additional shade uh, for the goats as well as up in there. So all of this is is uh, is all connected so eventually what we will have again I said earlier about eight to ten uh, different paddocks and those paddocks will go from the barn out to the main perimeter fence um, each one is a be about uh, three-quarters of an acre large three-quarters to one acre uh, large depending upon which one it is um, this is will be the main connection area that connects all of the paddocks together there will be a main path going um, from east to west uh, connecting all the paddocks into one common um, alley so here's the back of the barn what we have here is uh, the back of the chicken coop uh, you have a little access door there uh, where the chickens come in and out of and then that's a solar operated door opens every morning at 6 a.m. closes every night at 6 p.m. Uh, they kind of put themselves up people ask well why why did you do this why don't you have a separate uh, uh, chicken coop and again you know our goal on Lala Farm is to try to be uh, as natural as we can with respect to um, everything we do whether that be parasite prevention whether that be um, 
uh, using non-organic uh, or organic or non-GMO uh, types of feed uh, and products. Uh, and this is just one more step toward that goal. Um, some of the research that I have read shows that there's good support uh, that when it comes to reducing parasite loads overall within a livestock uh, operation, that chickens can be helpful for that in terms of um, in terms of, of going through and helping with the um, uh, any hatched eggs, parasite eggs that may be present in feces. So um, they basically come out each day and start um, uh, scratching through the, um, the the straw that's on the ground where the feces is, uh, as well as throughout the entire uh, pasture and paddocks. Um, so that's where a lot of their nutrition supplementation comes from is and their protein source are parasitic worms um, and things that they find in the soil. So it's just one more step toward us being as uh, kind of eco-friendly as we can. So we come to this side. This is m the main side where the does hang out and you can see um, kind of where they're at doing that right now. So we got our main herd uh, mistress right there. That is um, JFF Leia. Um, this is uh, uh, CWF Tiny, and then a whole bunch of all together. There's there's 19, 19. Um, uh, I'm sorry, 22 uh, does on our property. And then we have uh, a show uh, a show goat boar, which is coming into the screen right there. And then we've got our two herd sires and two weathers um, in terms of, of goats. So coming to this side of the barn. So now as you were looking at this, this would be the right side of the barn. Um, more loafing area and then on this side we have uh, our Advantage 200 HD feeder we've got three of those total right now we've only got two installed one is down in that paddock that paddock now has our uh, three of our pregnant does uh, we've just gotten word that another I think ten of them are confirmed uh, through pregnancy tests uh, so we'll have all together about 14 uh, does um, that will be delivering between this week or next week and the end of February. So there's a good example right there. There's Buff Orpington that's coming out here just scratching through um, through the straw um, that the uh, goats have, have deposited their waste into. Um, so walk around here. So this is our primary goat handling or our goat handling chute. Now the setup on this side is very similar to what we had on the other side um, with the buck pen, uh, except this pen can be converted with the, with the gate configuration uh, to be a much longer uh, alley to be able to pull the gates in. I'll show you that in a moment. So here's, this is our show, show goat pearl, eating out of the Advantage 200 feeder. Uh, this is just an, an excellent product we have found um, to limit consumption to about uh, a half a pound per goat per day um, by adjusting um, uh, the different, there's three different adjustments on this device that allows us to, uh, to control that feed consumption. Uh, this is a beef feed barrel, uh, another way again to keep our hay dry and um, keep it out of the Florida humidity. So this, we load this barrel from the top. Uh, and then they pull it out from the bottom through the little squares and that has worked exceptionally well. Coming around here we've got two more of the automatic uh, waterers. Again this is for the main doe herd. And then on this side we have yet another mineral feeder that they will use as well as another salt block. So. Um, all of this is, is really, you know, we can isolate different parts of the barn and that's what uh, requires that we have a lot of, um, a lot of different facilities. Some of it we just haven't moved because we've had it configured differently. Some of it we can configure to have uh, different goats isolated. So again, now we're going over into uh, the birthing pen where we have uh, three of our goats who will deliver within the next, um, month um, contained. Uh, so out there we have to the far left uh, is um, our goat Fancy. She's going to be delivering literally within the next week. Um, in the middle, the red one, that is Callie. Behind her is Pawnee Girl and they will be delivering 
um, no later than uh, Christmas Day. I think actually Pawnee is actually due on Christmas Day. So this is another pen. They're all about the same size. Half uh, this this one's probably a little bit smaller than the ones that will be fenced, and this one's right at probably a half an acre. Um, but it's the same configuration in terms of uh, another uh, 200 HD feeder, a couple more automatic waters, and another barrel containing uh, their hay. Um, so if we look at this pen, you'll notice it has a lot of gates. Now these gates can be configured in any number of ways to make various stalls of various sizes and that's how we use this. So when we're going to do our goat checks, all we do is simply align these gates um, so that uh, all of these openings are closed with a gate. We only have one opening for the goats to come in and through that opening is how they um, uh, is how we're able to catch them. Once we have them caught and contained, um, then we have from that end to that gate right there um, uh, where they have to is the containment area. This gate here opens up into our goat master uh, chute which is where we do all of our goat checks and I will show you that in a moment. So I told you I'd show you our goat chute configuration and here again coming down the right side of the barn going into the main doe pen this is our uh, goat master uh, goat handling chute so uh, within here we have this little table on wheels uh, this allows us to uh, allows us to uh, put our tools and equipment medications as we're as we're doing our goat checks but so we're coming out of the long pen that was in here this is on the doe side of the barn and remember this is this is the long chute uh, that can be configured depending on how we align the gates but once we have them all captured then um, we bring them into the goat master via this gate here so we have one in the gate and one waiting to come into the gate our scales are all integrated into the gate and our scales mount here so that it makes it really really easy to get uh, weight very quickly um, this particular chute has a head chalk gate uh, so once they come up into this um, we put their head and close the chalk around their head which means that then they're kind of uh, they're locked in there and allows us to do hoof checks, allows us to check for any any abscesses, allows us to, to just kind of do a thorough um, kind of goat check to make sure that there are no health issues if we're uh, drawing blood um, um, for pregnancy or for any, any health checks. Um, it makes it really, really easy to draw that blood while they're in here. So we do all that at one time. Um, so once they come in, then this little this panel here that's just uh, held on with carabiners that comes off. So they come through the chute here, up into the goat master, and then once I open up the head chalk, they just jump right back into the main pasture. Um, so it just makes it super super easy uh, for the bucks. Not so easy. We got to take the scales out of here, move them to the other side uh, to their catch pen, and then uh, uh, do their weights over there. But uh, so that's kind of it. That's the barn. I'm not going to take you on a tour of the pastures because uh, that would be a whole another that would be a whole another video. And right now, frankly, we don't have uh, a lot of that. Um, we don't have a lot of of the uh, pastures um, fenced in or crossed fenced yet. So it probably would not be uh, probably wouldn't be very entertaining anyway. So I hope you hope you enjoyed this video, uh, kind of the barn tour. And uh, if you did enjoy it, uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Um, uh, when you subscribe, you should get the uh, bell sign, uh, so that if you click that as well, you will get uh, a notification when additional videos are dropped down. But uh, I hope you enjoyed the barn tour, and uh, and thank you for visiting La La Farm. Be well.